Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is peer. Peer. Now here as we come to the end of Matthew's gospel, Matthew 28, uh, you'll see the resurrection and then you see that that first Sabbath resurrection, uh, I'm sorry, that first Sunday after the Sabbath was over, that first resurrection Sunday, uh, was such a wonderful time, but you can imagine even the excitement and confusion and fear, and you see the lie that was spread um, by the guards and officials, and then you'll see the Great Commission there at the end. And then uh, tomorrow we'll pick up with Mark chapter 1, so we'll go right back to the beginning again. So as we go through these Gospels especially, I believe it's, um, it's a lot that we can take from them. Now, having said all that, with the word peer, now, you can use the word peer two ways, right? Uh, you can have friends or peers, and then you can also peer into something, to look into something. So we actually want to look at both of those, because here you'll find that at least the, the ladies come in pairs. Uh, they come with their peer. But then by the end, by the time they've come and they have uh, had this experience there at the tomb, and they see, they are able to peer and see what's going on, then they are told to leave and go share with the brethren. So let's see Matthew 28 verses 1 through 8 today. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. One of the things that I really like here is that the angel of the Lord came to roll the stone away and sat on it. I heard a, a preacher one time, uh, I believe it was Herb Revis, uh, and if it wasn't him, uh, his name just escaped me. Uh, but as he was uh, preaching a sermon on that, he said, you know, can you just imagine that angel that got that job? Uh, you know, he's kind of picking at it. Just imagine the the boasting he could have done in heaven. To say, I ain't got time to do any of these other things y'all got to do. I have a special assignment. I get to go roll the stone away and, and essentially see the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But, you know, even when we think about that and, and wonder what it must have been like, we have to remember that the angel rolled the stone away not to let Jesus out, but to let us in. See, Jesus, as he shows that he could go through locked doors and into locked rooms, he shows that with his glorified body. So he was bodily raised and resurrected. So it wasn't just his spirit that was walking around. He had flesh and a body that could be handled, but that also could be uh, be able to go through walls and be able to go through a tomb, uh, a stone. And, and to think about that, had the stone remained rolled back and no one gone in, then how would you know, right? How would you know that it was Jesus, right? That would always be the little bit of doubt there. But the fact that the angel says, come and look, see where he was laying, where he used to be. Come and look into it, peer into the room. And we know even as the disciples come, as we'll see as the other gospel writers talk about that when the disciples show up. And, and, and the fact that one stops at the door, one runs all the way in, and they begin to look and examine and see that, yes, Jesus is risen, just as he said. So part of that peering that I think we could do is not only, uh, you know, is it great to go through those experiences with other people around you that you are seeing the work of God in front of you and you have someone there to share it with. As 
Mary had the other Mary with her to be able to share in that experience. But then to be able to look into the things of God, look into the miracle that had just happened, and then to get the, the message from the angel telling them exactly what had happened and then even telling them, hey, you need to go back and share the news with others. Share the news with the brethren. Share the news with the disciples. He's going ahead to Galilee. They'll see him there. And, and you notice that even as you go on later, you notice that even the disciples, right, they, they, don't, they don't at first see that as being true. They, they don't go to Galilee first. They, they hesitate and, and, and they, they worry about how all these things could be. And I would say that other peering today that we need to do is we need to look back at what Jesus had said. We need to look back at what God has already told us. He had already told the disciples exactly what was going to happen. But in the fear and in the even in the confusion of the moment. And I mean, you think about all the all that they had seen Christ suffer through the crucifixion, the beating and the crucifixion and then his death and and that Sabbath that would have been the quietest ever. And then resurrection Sunday morning. What excitement, joy, fear, confusion, all the emotions that they would have had. And they forgot the word of God. They forgot that he told them that already. It's interesting back in chapter 27 that even the soldiers remembered what he said. And, and they had an idea, you know, that the, his enemies basically believed or at least had listened and paid enough attention to say, hey, you remember he said he was going to rise again, so we need to go guard the tomb. And actually all it did was just them wanting to guard the tomb actually just gave some soldiers proof that the disciples didn't steal the body. It was proof that Jesus was alive. And he's alive still today. I wonder today, in both uses of the word peer, I wonder if you'll come alongside a brother or sister in Christ and come look to the word together. It's kind of what we're doing here, but do it f physically beside somebody, with somebody. Get in a prayer time or a Bible study with somebody or enjoy those Bible studies at church or Sunday school or small groups, you know, at a house, whatever, at work, whatever it may be. But then also peer into not just the empty two but peer into the word of God, peer into what he has already said. And you will find great strength in everything that he's promised. We'll find great excitement and joy. And yes, sometimes fear all the emotions, but we will find it in the word of God. God bless you. And I pray have a great, great day.